and eight. Dennis Schroeder, 21, nine of 15. Anthony Davis, 28 and two. Wes Matthews, six for six from three for 18. Let's hear from the Lakers head coach, Frank Vogel. He's speaking with Mike in the media on Zoom. Hey, Frank, it was another really efficient offensive night, another night uh, really efficient from three, I suppose, part, thanks in part to Wesley Matthews. But uh, what do you think has been behind the offense just starting off the season so well when a lot of times it seems like defense uh, kicks the season off? Yeah, I mean, I think we're just we're, we're playing intelligent offensive basketball. You know, we're, we're really attacking and, um, you know, with the exception of some stretches of the Portland game, you know, we're really thinking uh, extra pass basketball. And, and we got a lot of shot makers on this team. So, you know, if, uh, if you're fo focusing on uh, shot quality and, and the extra pass with the shot makers we have on our team, uh, we're going to have the ability to be efficient. And, um, you know, we saw that for four quarters tonight. And any thoughts specifically on Wesley, uh, who had had the the tough couple of games shooting prior to this one? Yeah, well, we, you know, we don't we don't worry about Wes. You know, uh, we know what he's he's done throughout his career. Uh, you know, he's a knockdown shooter and a great defender, and uh, you know, just excited that he's in the Lakers uniform and and what kind of lift he's going to give us throughout the year. Uh, struggled a little bit, you know, as as we're you know playing a lot of guys and trying to get guys in rhythm. Uh, you know, the first few games, but but tonight, again, the ball movement was really good, so we got a few clean looks early, and, um, you know, then he made a, made a couple of shot fake step backs, you know what I mean, which is uh, something he's capable of, but, uh, you know, red hot tonight. Kyle? Um, Frank, you've talked before about, um, you know, how tough it is for you as a coach to to find minutes for everybody that you think could could play in the rotation belt, in the sense of getting guys to touch the ball on offense and getting guys shots, is that also kind of a struggle to kind of make sure that hey, so and so is getting enough touches, so and so is getting enough touches, and, and getting looks in you know given stint. Yes, uh, it, it can be a challenge, and um, you know that's part of a new group learning about each other. You know, what I mean, we're working four new players in five if you if you count Talon and. Uh, the guys were not really part of the rotation last year, and um, you know there's always going to be uh, a little bit of a learning curve with guys uh, learning learning each other. But again, like if you continue to focus on uh, you know the the shot quality and the man with the basketball thinking, set up a teammate. You know that's that's what our whole focus is 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 to think extra pass uh, with the ball. And the ball finds energy; it starts moving around the, the horn, and um, you know finds the open man. So typically, if we're moving the ball well. Uh, guys will find shots enough. Uh, let's go, Brad. Frank, um, when you guys turn the ball over like 17 times, are there moments where you think to yourself, we could really use a good practice, shoot arounds, so we can clean this stuff up? Not really. You know what I mean? I, I think most, most teams, when they get into the uh, – you know, the heart of the season, there's not a lot of practice time anyway. It's, it's just challenging your guys to be better, uh, understanding, you know, where, where teams are going to force turnovers and, you know, uh, minimizing the times that they're self-inflicted, you know, and they're, they're unforced. You know, that's what you want to stay away from. Uh, so it's really just kind of coaching the guys. You know, we, we don't really try to uh, concentrate on things we can't control, right? You know, I mean, if we, we can't get on the floor because of, uh, because of the rapid test in the morning, um, or for whatever reason, like that's just out of our control, you know. So, uh, you know, it's not really my thought process uh, in game. Yovan. Hey Frank, uh, you, you've talked a lot about experimenting with with lineups and rotations. Um, you went with the different closing lineup tonight with, with the starters and, and then Keith at the big. I'm curious what you thought about that lineup over the last, you know, final few minutes of the game. Well, that's that's a lineup, you know, that I don't need to learn anything about. Um, you know, I know Keep and, and AD and Bron, uh, you know, helped us win a championship. You know, with a, with the lineup of uh, two guards and those three guys. So it's just something I have I have a lot of confidence in. Um, you know, but it, you know, the rhythm of the game dictates you know what's necessary too. The matchups, uh, you know, who's been in, who's been out. Keep had been in. You know, we could have gone uh, back with Mark. You know, I, I like, I still like Trez being in there. Uh, Mark had been sitting for a while. Uh, Keith had just come out, so we just went with a warm guy. Um, and again, but AD at the five, Keith at the four, Bron and, and two guards, the lineup that, that uh, you know, we know works for us. Hello and welcome back.
Access Sportsnet Lakers, driven by your Southern California Honda dealers, Chris McGee, James Worthy, Robert Ory, Ali Clifton's going to join us in a minute. We got Trudell and Bresnahan working virtually, working the locker rooms. We'll get all the sound for you. The Lakers start their first road trip of the year and the final game of 2020 with a win in San Antonio. Big game, Rob. They shot 54% from three. They built up that eight-point lead at the end of the first and really kind of cruised from there. Yeah, they corrected the, the loss. I think they corrected with a, with a fresh start. Um, you know, San Antonio without one of their key players, and the Lakers made sure they took care of that early. AD a little bit more active er, early in the game. Uh, you know, LeBron James doing what he does. Uh, Shooter's going to be a, a, a factor. And tonight, uh, Matthews, uh, we saw what he can do. 18 points. I don't think he missed a three. So imagine what that could be like. And I think, uh, you know, they did what they had to do against a team that was uh, a little bit weak tonight. Yeah, Rob, six more guys in double figures. Again, they go over 120. The offense, not going to be the issue. Oh, yeah, the offense wasn't the issue tonight. You had the birthday boy going out doing his thing. But, you know, I like the aggressiveness of, as, of Montrez. I like the aggressiveness of, of, of Gasol. All these guys were doing their thing in the paint. And sometimes this, everybody wants to shoot threes. But when you have guys like this, sometimes you need points in the paint for a while. The Spurs was killing them with points in the paint, but they caught up. They show you the aggressiveness. They start going to the basket and not just selling for threes. All right, let's hear from LeBron. He's with Mike Trudell. All right, there he is, the birthday boy, LeBron. First of all, just happy birthday, man. No, I appreciate it. Appreciate it. <laughs> uh, by the way, so coming this close to Christmas, do you get the short end of the stick on the uh, present end there, LeBron? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, uh, you get like one shoe on Christmas and then get the other shoe on, on your birthday. So they spread <laughs> it out. <laughs> uh, hey, man, you, you've talked so often about, you know, the kid from Akron, uh, how far you've come. And I just figure with another uh, birthday like this in, into context, you uh, you scored double digit points for a 1000th straight game, continuing that record. Uh, how do you just put this career, put this whole life into perspective? Um, I mean, it's just too hard to do it at this point, um, at this moment. Um, I, I just try to live in the moment and just try to continue to get better uh, with my game, try to get better with my teammates, um, and try to, uh, you know, just maximize when I'm out on the floor. So I've been very blessed to play the game that I love at this level for 18 years, and hopefully I can continue to play at a high level. All right, for tonight's game, I know you guys make it a focus not to lose back-to-back -back games. What was the key today in taking control of this one? Uh, I mean, we knew we was going against a very good team. Uh, they do a great job of uh, getting into the paint. They do a good job of uh, shooting the three ball, sharing the ball. So, you know, we just want to try to get multiple stops in a row. And uh, we got a hell of a boost from our bench. Um, uh, Wes uh, came in and shot the hell out of the ball. So, you know, that was exceptional. Uh, Trez got on the offensive rebounding. Uh, so our bench did a heck of a job of giving us a boost tonight. You mentioned Wesley Matthews, six for six from three. Two other Lakers have hit at least that many threes and not missed, Kobe and Nick Van Exel. Uh, so pretty good company. Uh, you just got to get keep giving the guy the ball, right? It's pretty simple when they're shooting like that? No, absolutely. Um, you know, and he, and he had it going, and you saw this. So, you know, every time, you know, we knew he was open or even when he created some space off the dribble, he was able to knock it down, so we just continued to find him. All right, last thing for you. I know things are a little bit restricted. LeBron, of course, uh, with the pandemic and everything, but any kind of birthday plans with the teammates back at the hotel? Uh, yeah, I mean, we'll probably just drink some wine. Um, I know that's what I'm going to do, so my teammates are always welcome. Uh, you know, get something to eat, uh, drink some wine, and, uh, you know, start preparing for, for the game on the first. So, uh, you know, it's not the... Uh, it's not the birthday celebration that I would like, but I love a win. I love to play this game at a high level. So I'll take that, and I'm with my teammates, so I'll take that as well. All right, LeBron, happy birthday once again. Happy 36. We appreciate the time. I uh, appreciate you guys. All right, happy birthday, LeBron James, getting buckets. Check this out. 1,000 straight games with 10 points. The last time he was less than 10 was January 5th, 2007. Only eight games in his entire career with less than 10 points. Think about that one. Only eight games, and he's got 1,262 games total with 10 or more points. That is fourth all time behind Kareem, Karl Malone, Dirk, and then LeBron. Uh, running out of ways to describe him. Do you just want to go at that? Uh, Eight I'm, times, Rob. I'm just sitting there saying, I got 1,262 games under 10 points, man. I know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you know, that's the thing about him. You, if you, you watched him when he first came in his league, even when he came in his league, he was just amazing from, from the day first he game started, from the first game. Yeah. You know, and he's just matured and got better. And he didn't let any outside forces stop him from being one of the best in this game. You got, I played a lot of superstars. And I played with some guys that you would not know 
they didn't have the work ethic and they're this good. I'm like, well, they don't work hard, but this guy works hard on his game all the time. I remember watching him in the practice site, just watching how hard he's practicing. I'm like, dude, you old, go sit down. Huh. But he's still practicing hard. He's still trying to get it in. He's still trying to be the best. You know, if you play the, the game the right way, which he's learned how to do his whole career, it's easy to get 10 points a game the way he plays the game. I just wonder, Allie, is he aware of these kind of records? He's usually pretty keen to his records and things that he has going. I bet he knows he's got this record going. Let me share this kind of irony with you because it's kind of interesting. So tonight mm -hmm. on his 36th birthday, he reaches 1,000 consecutive, correct? Mm -hmm. The last time we discussed it, the last time we even talked about it, was when he passed Michael Jordan at 866. That was in 2018 when he was with the Cavs. I was there for that game. He did that against the team that Michael Jordan owns, wow. the Hornets. Yeah. So it, it's, does he go out and say, I need to get 10 points like you guys just talked about every single game? No, he doesn't look at it that way. But the one thing that I remember when I just went back and read an article from that night that Dave McMenamin wrote was that the, the result of what this accomplishment shows is what he's most proud of. He's durable. And every time he suits up, he's productive for his teammates. And I think that's the biggest reflection in what makes this accomplishment so admirable um, is that that's what it's been for his whole entire career. Yeah, I, I agree with you. It's, it's, it's remarkable. And I, when I think of uh, the longevity and, and what's so impressive about it, I, I always think of, of Kareem. I remember, you know, James, in the 80s, guys weren't playing 20 years, especially at that level. And now you see kind of the greats of all time, like Tom Brady. Guys like that have been doing it into their 40s, and it's so impressive. It's the way they take care of themselves and the maintenance that goes in. It's not just the physical attributes that they have and how good they are. There's just so much more, and the mental approach is what really sets them apart from everyone else. And, and to go along with their mental approach, you know, I was talking to Gary Vitti, my trainer, for your trainer for 32 years or so, and uh, he was saying, man, if I knew what I knew then, I could probably could have added two or three more years on your career. So the science and the nutrition, uh, the, the, the knowledge of how to take care of your bodies, it's not just ice and heat anymore and Ben Gay and that kind of stuff. It's a whole <laughs> other thing. And these guys.